I'm Alex Sala, professor of astrophysics at Johns Hopkins. I'm also a professor in the computer science department. And I'm the director of the Institute for Data Intensive Engineering and Science that we pronounce as IDEAS. And I'm also the director of the NVIDIA Center of the CUDA Center for Excellence at Johns Hopkins. So we built recently a big cluster at Johns Hopkins, which has some very unique properties. First of all, it was relatively inexpensive. So it has about 100 nodes, where every node has lots and lots of disk drives and solid state disks, a very fast I.O. And then every box has also one to two Tesla cards. We can actually stream lots of data very, very fast off the hard drives and directly into the GPUs. And then taking these data streams, we can actually perform the analysis online and even, I would say, in line. And the analysis not only involve pattern recognition or processing of the astronomy data, but also very high throughput visualizations. How this brings out new insights into science. A very large cosmological simulation that had uh, close to 300 billion particles. And uh, this consists of um, dark matter particles inside the galaxy like the Milky Way. And people are, have tried to calculate how these dark matter particles collide with each other. And because the annihilation of these particles as they collide may be observable in the near future through a satellite that's already up and collecting data. So this is a very topical issue. The computation of a single image of this annihilation map on a regular computer took about eight hours. And first we rewrote it in CUDA and that took it down to a few minutes. And then we actually rewrote it in an OpenGL shader language. And now we can do the computation in 20 seconds. From eight hours to 20 seconds, that's no small thing. So scientific computing today is hitting the power wall. And so as we need more and more CPU cycles and faster processing, more parallelism for our applications, at the same time, we have to do it pretty much at constant power. We need to somehow get twice as many cycles every year to face the next challenges. We will not be able to put more powers into our computer rooms. And this happened, we managed to burn down the transformers of our physics building with our computing, so we learned it the hard way. GPU computing is now pretty deeply embedded in almost all the science projects that we do. We have a large GPU cluster. There is a whole NSF IGERT, a graduate education program centered around multi-scale simulations and multi-scale computing, and all those students are using the cluster. There are more and more faculty who are basically, every one of the projects is now using GPU codes, so it, it is now permeating the whole texture of the computing at the university. So I think it is becoming really part of everyday life.